again from Fox News in Washington. Any concerns President Trump has had about leaks and disloyalty inside his administration were confirmed this week by that anonymous column in the New York Times and Bob Woodward's new book. Top officials openly admit they work against presidential directives they consider dangerous. And add to that, Barack Obama back in the political spotlight, hammering President Trump in the run-up to the midterm elections. On Saturday, Vice President Mike Pence invited us to his residence on Embassy Row in Washington to push back against stories of an administration in disarray. Mr. Vice President, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Chris. Let's start with Barack Obama's return to the campaign trail, accusing President Trump of practicing the politics of fear and resentment. Your reaction? Well, it was very disappointing to see President Obama break with the tradition of former presidents and become so political and roll out the same tired arguments that he and liberals have made over the last eight years. The truth is the American people in 2016 rejected the policy and direction of Barack Obama when they elected President Donald Trump. Look, we, we inherited an economy that was growing a little bit more than 1%. In the last quarter, our economy is growing at 4.2%, 4 million new jobs, unemployment at a 50-year low. And uh, to have President Obama come out and tout uh, his policies that resulted in less than 2% growth, which saw tax increases, Obamacare regulation, and a doubling of the national debt, I think uh, was, uh, it, it was it was very disappointing, but frankly, uh, frankly, I think it just illuminates the choice the American people have in the midterm elections. Let's look, though, at some of President Obama's specific charges. He talks about actions like the president calling on the attorney general, Jeff Sessions, to investigate who wrote that anonymous article in the New York Times. It should not be a partisan issue. To say that we do not pressure the Attorney General or the FBI to use the criminal justice system as a cudgel to punish our political opponents. What are the national security grounds to investigate that article? What law did the writer break? Well, we'll, we'll find out if there was criminal activity involved. It certainly what would criminal be an activity could there be? There was no classified information. Well, we'll see. I think the president's concern is that this individual may have responsibilities in the area of national security. And if they've now published an anonymous editorial that says that they are misrepresenting themselves, that they're essentially living a lie within this administration and trying to frustrate and subvert the agenda the president was elected to advance, that's, uh, well, that's an important issue. Political disloyalty, it's certainly troubling. Well, it's not illegal. Well, but, but there's another part of it, though. Uh, it, you know, every senior official in any administration takes an oath to the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States vests all executive power in the President of the United States. To have an individual who took that oath literally say that they work every day to frustrate the president advancing the agenda he was elected to advance is undemocratic. It's not just deceitful, but it's really an assault on our democracy, and that person should do the honorable thing, step forward and resign. I, I want to get into the question as to whether they're trying to thwart the will of the president in a moment, but I want to look, because President Obama mentioned this as well, the president's tweet earlier this week basically chastising, rebuking Attorney General Sessions for the bringing the prosecution on charges of corruption against two GOP House members. The president tweeted, two very popular Republican congressmen were brought to a well-publicized charge just ahead of the midterms by the Jeff Sessions Justice Department. Two easy wins now in doubt because there is not enough time. Good job, Jeff. The president is saying, play politics, protect members of Congress, even if they have committed acts of corruption before the election. No, I don't think that's what the president was saying at all, Chris. Look, the Department of Justice, as you know, has long-standing guidelines through successive administrations that says that whenever possible, the Justice Department should avoid taking actions that may impact an election. 
president. The president was referring to that and the difficulty that it has to have other men and women. These are two people, one supposedly committing an insider trading, another one who was living high off campaign funds. Are you saying that they should be protected because we're close to a Well, they're all very serious allegations and they ought to be pursued. But I think the president was referring to the longstanding tradition in the Justice Department to avoid unnecessarily impacting election outcomes and perhaps preventing other men and women from stepping forward and filling those slots in the future. But look, I, I, think, I think one of the virtues of this president, one of the reasons why we've been so successful over the last 18 months is because he speaks directly to the American people. You don't have to wonder what President Trump is thinking almost on any given morning because he tells the American people what's on his mind. Just because and it's that it doesn't mean it isn't troubling well, when he says, I mean, again, just forgive me, sir, two easy wins now in doubt because there is not enough time. Good job, Jeff. Should the Attorney General be worried about that? I think, look, the, this is a president that was elected by speaking directly to the American people and being candid with the American people uh, and, and expressing his, what he's enthusiastic about, what he's frustrated about. And the American people understand that. This gets to the theme of both the anonymous article and also of Bob Woodward's book, that some officials within this administration, within this White House, feel that they have to act, in effect, as guardrails to protect against some of the president's more impulsive actions. Case in point, first story in Woodward's book, September of 2017, Gary Cohn, the chief economic advisor, walks into the Oval Office and sees a, a, a letter on the president's desk that would blow up the Korean, South Korean free trade deal and jeopardize one of our most important alliances, and he takes it away so the president won't sign it. Do you have any doubt that happened? Well, I, I have every doubt that that happened. I, I really do. And and what, what? the president renegotiated the South Korean but he free trade it. agreement in a way that put American jobs and American workers first. But look, I... I but, but no, if I, if I may just stay in this... the overall if narrative If, I, that's if I may just stay in this point for one minute, because Bob Woodward didn't just quote somebody. He has... The document here, this is the letter that he took off the president's desk, Mark September 2017, in which the president, if he had signed it, would have terminated the South Korean trade deal. This isn't just talk. He's, he's got the goods here. This is a president who puts people around the table, around the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office, that bring him all of the options. They put on the table everything that he could be doing. He invites a vigorous debate around the desk, and then he makes a decision. That's how it really does work. And I have to tell you, this entire narrative that I get from what I've read about uh, the book that came out and the narrative and the opinion editorial is totally foreign to me. And when but, the but president and I are both happen, in town, sir. Chris, I, mean, I, spend, I spend about four hours a day with the president when we're both in Washington, D.C. every day. And what I see is a tough leader, a demanding leader, someone who gets all the options on the table, but he makes the decisions. And that's why we've made the progress. But here is what Anonymous sees. He writes in that article in the New York Times, that is why many Trump appointees have vowed to do what we can to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Trump's more misguided impulses until he is out of office. Woodward describes what he calls a nervous breakdown inside the Trump administration. It's absolutely absurd. And I have to tell you, be honest with you, Chris, sometimes I, I watch a little bit of TV in the morning, and then I go to the White House, and I feel like uh, I, I'm in a parallel universe. I walk into a White House where there's a president behind the desk. He's in command. He's constantly driving forward on, on delivering on the promises that we made for the American people. And then I go home at night and I see cable TV talking about all of this stuff about disarray in the White House. And it's just not my experience. I mean, I, I, but I, I tell people, look at the results. You look at the passage of historic tax cuts for businesses and individuals and 
the way that jobs are coming back and investment is coming back, the renegotiation of trade deals, our allies contributing more to our common defense, all of that is happening because we have a president of, of almost boundless energy who comes in every day, regardless of what's happening in the, the Washington media culture, and says, what are we doing today to deliver for the American people? And I think that's why I, I see such enthusiasm as I travel across the country, and that's why I believe the American people are going to vote to re-elect Republican majorities in the House and Senate this fall. Do you think you know who Anonymous is? I, I don't. I don't know. But I, I do know that they should resign and leave this administration. Should all top officials take a lie detector test, and would you agree to take one? I would agree to take it in a heartbeat and uh, would submit to, to any review the administration you think wanted the, to do. The, the administration should do that? Well, that look, that would be a decision for the president. But, uh, but look, I, 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 I think the, We're doing the, the honorable thing to do here yeah. is for this individual to recognize that they are, they're literally violating an oath. If they are that senior administration official, that they're, that they're violating an oath, not to the president, but to the Constitution. Treason? Look, it's, 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 it's un-American. And I think that's why you've seen Republicans and Democrats condemn this. The American people vote for a president. They fully expect the president to be able to surround themselves with men and women who will work with them in advancing their agenda. But to have someone who literally celebrates coming in every day to frustrate the agenda that the president and I were elected to advance, um, it really is an assault on our democracy, and it should be universally condemned. One of the more unusual words in the essay is lodestar, which it turns out, people have looked, is a word that you have used yeah. many times. Sure. Must again be our lodestar. With vigilance and resolve as our lodestar. It really was the lodestar. Do you think someone purposely put that in the essay to try to set you up? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. And I, I really do believe whether it's the book, whether it's the anonymous editorial, whether it's President Obama's speech this week, it's, it's all an effort to distract attention uh, from this booming economy and from the president's record of success. And it, it's all very predictable. We have important midterm elections coming up. Uh, I get all of that. But, I, but the American people should know President Trump and I are, are going to remain absolutely determined to, to reelect this Republican Congress so we can continue to build on the momentum that's putting Americans back to work. What did you think of the confirmation hearings for Judge Brett Kavanaugh? What did you think of some Democrats who decided to break the rules and to release what were committee confidential documents? And how confident are you that Kavanaugh will be on the Supreme Court when it resumes in October? Judge Brett Kavanaugh distinguished himself. Many Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee embarrassed themselves. That's the truth of it. And what the American people saw in Judge Brett Kavanaugh is a, is a jurist just like President Trump promised to appoint, someone of profound intellect, a judicial philosophy to interpret the laws of this country as written, interpret the Constitution as written. But they also saw in what was at times a circus in that Judiciary Committee, people shouting behind him and histrionics in the Judiciary Committee among Democrat members. You saw a judge with the temperament. Uh, to, to make it through those 12-hour hearings uh, with such dignity. And we have every confidence that before the Supreme Court convenes in October, Judge Brett Kavanaugh will be Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Finally, Syria. The U.S. has warned Syria, Russia, and Iran not to launch a final assault on Idlib province, home to more than three million people. Uh, they indicate that they intend to go ahead. Will the U.S. intervene militarily to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe there. We're watching it very closely, and we've made it very clear uh, to the regime in Syria, to Russia, uh, and Iran 
that uh, the United States and our allies will not tolerate uh, the use of chemical weapons against civilians in the Idlib province. There but, will but be let's swift. Say it's not there, chemical weapons. Let's say it's there barrel are, bombs. Well, let's say it's it, it's conventional weapons. Are we going to let hundreds of thousands of people die there, sir? Well, we're, we're, we all, we all know what happened in Aleppo. We're watching it all very closely. But what's different with President Trump from President Obama is this president drew a red line and enforced it on chemical weapons. President Obama drew a red line and said, Don't, you, you can't use chemical weapons, and, and then uh, allowed Assad in Syria to go forward and, and victimize countless uh, civilians. But, but, sir, dead but, is dead. I, 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 understand. I take your point about the hear, chemical but, weapons. Well, I, I want to I make it very, very clear, as, as the wider world is watching is that the United States of America and our allies will take swift and decisive action against any use of chemical weapons in the Idlib province. Beyond that, I will tell you that we're, we're watching very carefully as, as resources uh, are, are being marshaled uh, along the border of uh, the Idlib province. And um, uh, I'm, I'm confident it'll be a decision by the President of the United States, but I'm, I'm confident that we'll be monitoring that very, very carefully to ensure that, that we don't see another humanitarian catastrophe like we did before. Mr. Vice President, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chris.